right, so describing a little bit of the uh, test setup that we have here for this controller, we wanted to try and figure out what issues we might be facing with restoring this to operation. So we came up with sort of a test rig to simulate how this would react under the car. Um, since the controller operates on air, we have 70 PSI coming from the shop's air compressor uh, to operate the pistons and uh, the contactors. The magnet valves um, are controlled by a low voltage supply that we have fed into the master controller. We've made a couple of jumper connections where uh, interlock connections on the reverser would have been made when this is all set up properly. Uh, we just jumped around those for now. And then we have a higher voltage supply that's representing uh, the trolley voltage um, to show the effects of the switching of the different contacts as, as the master controllers advanced. For simulating the car, we've got a couple of pieces of, of equipment here. Uh, instead of big heavy traction motors, we've got a couple of light bulbs, but these show uh, in a nice visual way uh, how much current you have flowing through each branch of the circuit and roughly what the voltage is. And instead of the very heavy uh, cast iron resistor grids um, that will be used to control the motors, we have just a small bank of resistors here uh, to dim our light bulbs. This is all set up and wired similar to how it would be under the car. So the resistors are connected the same way that the traction resistors would be. The light bulbs are connected to the connections that the motors would take uh, coming out of the controller. So what that allows us to do is to not only step through all the different positions on the control and verify that everything's working, but also to give a demonstration of how the control system actually works and what it's doing to the motors. Wiring one of these is obviously a bit complicated if you look at this main wiring assembly, so we also wanted to make sure that we had um, the wires labeled correctly and that they were doing what we thought they were. So we'll go ahead and get this uh, fired up here and walk you through a little bit of how HL control actually works. The motorman would interact with the master controller on this system just as they would with uh, a traditional K platform controller. There's a handle on the left hand side of the controller that selects forward and reverse. Um, this feeds contacts on this small drum here and then this then feeds down into the reverser um, through interlock contacts. So if the motorman, let's say the car was last traveling forward, now the motorman selected reverse. Before the control can actually take power, the interlocks on, on the reverser ensure that the reverser is set properly uh, for the direction of travel that you desire. But once you set your direction of travel, there are a total of five points from off to what we call full series. Um, as we go up through those points, resistance is removed from the circuit um, until you get to the full series point where there is no external resistance in the circuit and the motors are running on essentially half voltage. Um, we then go through a process called transition where the motors change from a series connection to a parallel connection which allows the motors to uh, draw more current and generate more output power and it essentially lets the car go faster. So all of these features would have been incorporated into uh, not only the platform K controllers, but also other automatic um, or multiple unit control systems at the time. Um, so I'll start notching through uh, the different steps here. And remember the, the light bulbs on uh, the, the left side of the controller there are taking the place of the traction motors in the trucks. So taking the first point, you can hear some of the contactors move and you see that the light bulbs have both come on but they're very dim because we're in first point uh, which is maximum resistance in the circuit. So if we were again, if we were operating the car, we're now in first point, we're moving kind of slowly after a few seconds, we'll take second point. You can see that the lights are now a little bit brighter. We've removed some resistance from the circuit, continuing to notch up, third point, fourth point, full series. So now the light bulbs are running at half voltage. Um, this is essentially half speed for the car. 
It can be used for running in places where the car can't run 40 or 50 miles an hour. You only want to be doing 15 or 20 or so. Uh, the car would probably be running in series. So if we want to go faster, because Narcissus being a high speed in urban, 15 or 20 miles an hour really isn't going to cut it, even in 1914, uh, we need to first transition the motors to parallel and then go through the resistance process that we just did uh, again. So what the control system will do through transition is it'll put some resistance back into the circuit and then disconnect one of the motors set up a parallel connection for the motor that was disconnected and then reconnect the whole thing with a little bit of resistance uh, in the circuit again to smooth things out and to help limit the current. So when I go through transition here you're going to see one of the light bulbs turn off, the other one will get much brighter and then both light bulbs will come on at about the same brightness uh, when we're in the first resistance point for parallel. So here we go, we're going through transition. You can see a part go through, and then they both pick up in first resistance point parallel. And then continuing to accelerate through parallel is exactly the same as accelerating through series. Second point parallel, third point parallel, full parallel. You can see now the light bulbs are burning quite brightly, and they're running on full voltage. They're able to get uh, much more current than they were in the series position as well. To turn the car off, it's just the same as with uh, platform controls. Turn the switch off and the contactors in the switch group uh, remove power from both motors. This control system is also equipped with an overload trip. So if you were to accelerate the car too fast and the uh, tripping mechanism detected an overcurrent, this armature pushes in, and you'll see that it immediately knocks the control out. Now, to reset that, uh, you have a couple of different methods. The motorman would have a control reset switch mounted usually above the master controller. That would have a reset position, which energizes a coil inside this overload trip and allows it to untrip. There's also a manual release on the side. So you can pull that and you see that the lights came back on. Um, so this is one of the safety features that's baked right into the control. One of the other safety features that these would commonly have if they were used with emergency air brakes is you'd have some method of turning off the control power if the car went into emergency. Um, and in a lot of cases that would just take the form of a small air cylinder mounted on the control switch that would literally push the handle of the control switch off when the car went into emergency. So there are a couple of safety features that are built right into these controls. We're now taking a look at the opposite side of the controller and, and the white pieces that you see are called arc chutes. Um, these are designed to suppress and to contain the arcs that occur when the contactors open and close. I'll operate the controller here so you can see some of the contacts opening and closing. You may notice that the contactors move a little bit once they're actually pulled in. Uh, this is what they call wipe action which is designed to help keep the contact tips clean even when they've been burned um, from heavy arcing switching really high currents. So it's not just a simple air cylinder pushes up a piece of copper. There is more of a mechanism to these uh, to help them operate reliably over many, many miles of hard service. Sam. The management complimented us highly at a meeting yesterday on our success in putting the entire equipment in such good shape at small expense during the past year. Boss, I find there is a great deal in getting the men interested and enthused over their work. The satisfaction of doing things and seeing results have worked wonders. When I was at the Westinghouse Works in East Pittsburgh a year ago, I noticed this spirit. Every man I met was enthusiastic over the success of Westinghouse Railway Motors and HL Control. 
When you get everybody working that way, the rest is easy.